Hello everyone and welcome to another Halu Caesar review. Today I am reviewing Deducto, uh, a deduction game. Uh, and this is published by Game Right Games and it is for two to four players or detectives ages eight and up. This is a very, very simple uh, deduction game. Uh, it just is card, uh, completely card driven here, but I like it a lot it, for, for what it is. This deduction game, I think is done really, really well, uh, and really kind of gets your mind thinking. And, uh, again, it's, it's, it's what a game right does so well with, uh, all of these, these games. So, what comes in the box? You got kind of uh, one of their standard size boxes here with the deck of cards, with your little uh, insert here. Works great. Again, I much prefer this sort of packaging, even just for like a, a card game over a, a tuck box personally, because everything gets in there. Um, and so I think it's great. So the packaging is great on that. The cards, good quality cards. Uh, I, you know, could have a step up in quality, but uh, good quality cards uh, that uh, game right, standard game right uh, cards. They have a nice uh, standard background here. Uh, I think it's done well that it's kind of just that brown kind of background card because you don't want it to be. Uh, distracting as you're looking at all the important clues uh, ahead of you. So the other element, we have uh, the rule book here, as well as four reference uh, guides here with your all the different elements to the cards. So we have here, as you can see, seven different suspects. Uh, from Franny the Fox, Polly the Pigeon, Bruno the Badger, I think. We have Dante the Dog, Pinky the Pig, Clyde the Cat, and Roxy the Rabbit. Uh, we have some disguises here. There are also seven of them, sunglasses. Some will have mustaches, hats, bandana, wig, monocle, or mask. Uh, we also have seven locations, mountains, library, pier, park, city, aquarium, and desert. So uh, this is a reference to remind you uh, all the different uh, elements that are in play. Uh, we have this deck of cards. There's 49 suspect cards. And the important thing to remember with these cards is that they are all unique and no two cards will share uh, more than one element the same. So this one here, you see that uh, there is a mustache in both of these cards. But because there is a mustache, the other elements are not the same at all. So we would not have two mustachioed pigs here um, in the different backgrounds because then it would share more than one. And that's important as you get more and more information on uh, your suspect. So the kind of unique thing about this one here is that I feel like in a lot of deduction type games, everyone's trying to find out the same thing. Uh, this one is unique in the aspect that what happens is everyone is dealt five cards into their hand and they can look at those. And then they are also dealt a sixth card, but this is the suspect that they are trying to guess throughout the game. So if I was playing this, I would have my five cards, and then I would pick this card up without looking at it, and I would have it face out. Okay, so this is what I would see. And let me do another quick hand. Three, four, five, six... And this is what I would be seeing with the other players. Their cards, I would not see their cards in hand, but I would see their suspect that they are trying to get. Uh, the first kind of initial setup, there's one other element. I'm going to be choosing a card from my hand that shares at least one element from the person to my left of their suspect. 
So here I could do either this one with the bandana, uh, or I could do this, this one with the rabbit, uh, and I don't have a desert. So it'd be one of those two cards. There is a situation if I didn't have anything that I could choose any sort of card to give to them. So let's say I didn't have, you know, one that match a rabbit, bandana, or a desert. I could choose one of my cards to give to that person face up, but I would choose and I would say this does not have any matching elements. But what you do is if you do have one, that's what you go with and you say, hey, there you go. This one has one matching element with your suspect. So now they know, hey, it my suspect is either... Bruno has a bandana or is in the city. I don't know which one at this point, right? So then the game actually begins. And what happens is you start taking turns. And uh, when you play a card, you draw a card. But on your turn, you either are guessing your suspect, which won't happen for a while. And then your other turn is taking the cards from your hand. And let's say... I mean, I don't know what my suspect is, so I, I would have a card down here telling me something. But what would normally happen is, is I would, I would uh, reveal a card, and maybe I'll reveal it from my opponent here. So they would choose a card. They choose a card and they say, okay, this one, is it have any matching criteria? Well, we know that it does not. It doesn't have a bandana, it's not a rabbit, it's not in the desert. So we would go, no. And they would put it, we would tell them no, and they just put it in a no pile. So this is a yes pile, shares an attribute. This is a no pile, it does not share attributes. So now they know at least one thing, right? They know that it is not the city. And they can say that because we have this here and this does share one of the attributes. Uh, well, I guess it could could be, uh, yeah, so it eliminates the city right here. And you're looking at the combinations and it takes a little bit of effort as you go through, again, deduction here of, okay, what does that mean? What, you know, what do I have left? And Sometimes you might get a yes, another yes, or another yo, and no, and it's like, well, you can't necessarily think that it means what you think it means. You it may be another element that is is provided, and then they draw a new card to replace that one, and you go around and around, uh, and so you get more and more information, more piles. They choose another card. This one also no attributes. And so on. We'll just do this randomly for a little bit. There's another no. Uh, get another card. There's another no. And obviously there's some strategy here, right? Of what types of cards you're going to want to reveal based on what's given out here, based on what the other piles and the other players' hands are, based on what the other suspects are here. Um and so on. So you keep going around. Once you get to the point, you can guess. Uh, if you guess incorrectly, you're not immediately out of the game, which is also another kind of unique element to this. If you guess the first time and you're incorrect, you have to choose one of your piles to flip over. So there's a little bit of a memory game element to this. Uh, and so at this point, they had a lot of no's. Maybe they can remember pretty simply Bruno with the bandana in the city. Uh, so they'll flip it over. They have to flip one of their piles face down. They can no longer look at that information, nor can the other players. So now this person is a little more handicapped in their ability to try to remember and figure out who their person is. If it comes back around... They guess again and are incorrect, they would flip all of these cards, the other pile over. Now, in between those, they are still playing. So if they had revealed another card and we would tell them, nope, that's another no, it would go in that pile face up like it normally would. They just don't have access to the ones that they've guessed uh, 
since that incorrect guess. Obviously, if they guess incorrectly a third time, that is when they are out of the game. They can no longer uh, make any guesses. So very, very cool, unique uh, element there where you kind of have this memory element. You want to be able to guess your suspect first before anyone else. So, but it's also not the end of the world if you do that. So there is kind of that like push your luck a little bit of, okay, I think it's this. I'm pretty sure it's this. I'm going to guess this. If not, I do lose some of that, but I'm probably already thinking, I think it's this, this, or this. So now you just kind of have to remember that as you move forward. But it is very, very fun uh, game. I like it a lot. Uh, it, it, it's a really great deduction game. Uh, and I think it is great for families. But me and my wife also enjoyed it uh, with, you know, the, the deduction elements. It's, it's fun to see. There is some luck involved with, like, what you know, sort of cards that you get in your hand, you are limited to, you know, five at a time of which ones, but there's some strategy in figuring out which ones that you want to do. And you might get it down and be like, okay, I know it's Franny the Fox in the sunglasses, but I'm not sure the location yet. And so you're waiting for a different location to come up so that you can get that last bit of information. But very, very fun. I, I really enjoyed uh, Deducto, as, as did my family. I think this is a, a great one because it it kind of, uh, I, I was going to say strips away some of the added extra elements in uh, other deduction games. So if you think of like Clue, uh, Clue has the dice rolling, moving from room to room element, and... You know, you have the luck of the dice and stuff. Whereas this, you have cards, you're asking, you're basically revealing and having a yes, no uh, answer to the revealed information. You're organizing that, you're looking at everyone else's. It's It strips it down to that pure like, hey, a deduction game, there's some strategy with what you choose uh, to reveal uh, to others. Uh, or, you know, choose which card to get information. Uh, and so very, very fun uh, deduction game. This is Deducto by GameRight. I uh, really enjoyed this one. And that is how Lou sees it.